What's up? It's Marty Yitram, the Geeky American Otaku. I'm actually working on two videos as we speak, and one of them is actually related to this one. Sort of. Okay, so get ready first for a new episode of 15-Minute Game Show Reviews. <laughs> In case you're wondering, this video was the result of a poll I did back in February of which game show I was going to review next. The Crosswits was actually the winner of that one, and now I'm doing the third place result. I should actually be doing the winner that came in second, but I'll save that for next time because the subject is about a game show that's supposedly coming back this year. Anyway, it's time to take a trip back to the 90s and time to fill up some pies with Trivial Pursuit. It's time to test your Trivia IQ on the world's most popular trivia game, Trivial Pursuit. And here's the star of the show, the man who knows how to tell when a gorilla is angry, <laughs> Wake Martindale! Thank you very much, Randy West. Welcome, players. Thank you so much. Welcome to the television version of Trivial Pursuit. You know, I saw both the old and the new version of King Kong, so I'm something of an expert on gorillas. Did you know that you can tell when a gorilla is angry because he sticks his tongue out at you? It's true. <laughs> Try it. Try it. And I've also heard that if he's really angry, he goes, na 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 na. <laughs> Try it. You'll like it. Yep. More than 30 years ago, there was a game show based on the world's most popular trivia board game. Trivial Pursuit has been around since 1981, and it sold like hotcakes. This was not the first attempt at turning Trivial Pursuit into a game show, by the way. In 1987, near the height of the game's popularity, legendary game show producer Jay Wolpert tried to turn it into a TV show, but it didn't sell. Six years later, another legend in the game show industry, host Wink Martindale, produced this version of the game, and it featured interactive elements which allowed viewers from home to participate and win prizes. Now, keep in mind, this was before the internet really took off. Fifteen years later, they tried that again with a new version of the show called Trivial Pursuit, America Plays, which featured in-studio and online contestants playing for cash. But that's not going to be covered in this video. And if you haven't heard, there have been plans for LeVar Burton to host a new adaptation of Trivial Pursuit, and that will be airing on The CW sometime this year alongside a revival of Scrabble, although I don't think that the latter show will succeed if it is not based on the 1980s version everybody remembers. But I digress. Trivial Pursuit premiered on June 7th, 1993 on the Family Channel, now Disney-owned Freeform. The last first-run episode supposedly aired on September 3rd, 1993, but reruns aired until March 4th, 1994, and then again until September 7th of that year, until July 14th, 1995. There was also Trivial Pursuit, the interactive game, which was part of the same hour, where the Family Channel aired a block of reruns of other game shows, including the 1986 revival of The Crosswit, which was my last video review, Let's Make a Deal, Split Second, Name That Tune with Jim Lang, and Face the Music. The interactive game ended production as well on the same day as what Wink called Trivial Pursuit the Classic Game to differentiate the two, but it still aired repeats for the same time frame, although the interactive game was dropped for good on December 30th, 1994. There was also a pilot for a syndicated version that was taped in December of 1993, but unfortunately none of the stations picked that show up. But since Wink would put that on his YouTube channel, I will be talking about that later. The host and producer was the one and only Wink Martindale. Born Winston Conrad Martindale in Jackson, Tennessee in 1933, Wink's career began in broadcasting at the age of 17 at a local radio station. He then hosted mornings at WHBQ in Memphis while he was a college student at Memphis State University graduating with a Bachelor of Science in 1957. And while working at the station, Wink ended up doing an interview with the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, in 1954. In 1959, Wink recorded a spoken word version of the song Deck of Cards, which reached seven on the Billboard charts and even appeared on The Ed Sullivan Show. 
He later got a job at WHBQ TV in Memphis, where he first hosted a children's show called Mars Patrol and then Teenage Dance Party. Essentially, they're a local version of American Bandstand, where his longtime friend, Elvis, made an appearance in 1956. In 1964, Wink hosted his first game show, What's This Song?, which ran for a year on NBC. His first successful game show was the Blackjack-themed Gambit, which ran on CBS from 1972 to 75, and was revived in 1980 as Las Vegas Gambit on NBC, running for 13 more months. Wink's most famous game show by far was Tic-Tac-Doe, which ran from 1978 until 1986. Wink left in 1985 when he started his own production company, Wink Martindale Enterprises, and hosted his own series, Headline Chasers, co-produced by Merv Griffin. However, this show only lasted one season. He would, however, create a more successful series, Bumper Stumpers, which aired in both the U.S. and Canada, and was produced in the latter and ran for three years, from 1987 to 90. Other games shows he hosted included a revival of High Rollers, which I reviewed on my channel many, many years ago, the great getaway game on the Travel Channel, fellow interactive games Boggle, Shuffle, and Jumble, which aired on the Family Channel after Trivial Pursuit ended, and the popular Lifetime series, Debt. Wink received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2006, and he also appeared in many commercials in the 1990s, 2000s, and 2010s. In 2010, he hosted what is currently his final game show to date, Instant Recall on the Game Show Network. He even made an appearance on Adult Swim's Eric Andre show in 2013 and appeared on Game Show Network's The Chase in 2014 and in 2016 as a minister on The Bold and the Beautiful. In 2021, Wink began hosting the nationally and internationally syndicated The History of Rock and Roll, a two-hour weekend look back at music from the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. Finally, in 2014, Wink started his own YouTube channel, featuring episodes of game shows, game show pilots, rare clips from various game shows, and a lot more. So Wink Martindale is almost 91 years old, but he is showing no signs of slowing down. He is the man. The announcer was Randy West. Born in New York City in 1953, Randy was mentored by longtime Mark Goodson, Bill Todman announcer Johnny Olson after they met in 1971 when he was a contestant on the syndicated revival of What's My Line. Randy was a disc jockey before becoming a game show announcer. Following Johnny Olson's death in 1985, his family entrusted Randy with the many mementos, photos, clippings, awards, and scripts that Johnny had saved during his 50-plus year career in, bro in broadcasting. An extensive tribute to Johnny Olson is included on w Randy's personal website, as is a separate tribute to Rod Roddy, who died in 2003. Randy even wrote an autobiography about Johnny Olson called Johnny Olson, A Voice in Time. Randy was also a contestant on game shows, including the aforementioned What's My Line, Face the Music, Hitman, where he was the show's final champion, Press Your Luck, All-Star Blitz, Sweethearts, and the 1990 revival of To Tell the Truth. Trivial Pursuit was actually the first game show I remember hearing him announce, in addition to the other Family Channel interactive games a year later. He later announced Wild Animal Games, also on the Family Channel, which introduced the world to Ryan Seacrest, Hollywood Showdown, Supermarket Sweep during the PAX years, The Big Spin in California, the newlywed game revival on the Game Show Network, and he was the voice of Mr. Game Show on GSN's Game Show Moments Gone Bananas, a blooper series hosted by Ben Stein. Following Rod Roddy's death in 2003, Randy tried out to take over as the announcer on The Price is Right, which ultimately went to Rich Fields, though he would later do announcing and hosting duties for The Price is Right Decades video game. Randy has also announced for The Price is Right Live, the traveling casino version of the long-running game show. Anyway, here's how Trivial Pursuit was played. I will be starting with the version that aired on the Family Channel first, and then I'll mention the pilot version. The show was played in two halves. The first half hour was called the interactive game, and the second half hour was the classic game. Nine contestants, or 12 in early episodes as seen here, competed for three spots on the classic game. Wink would ask five questions with four multiple choice answers. The players then had 10 seconds to answer by pressing a number from 1 to 4 on a telephone keypad in front of them. 
The contestants scored points based on how fast they answered the question correctly with a maximum of 1,000 points available for each question. After five questions, the six players with the highest scores moved on to round two. The other players were eliminated and supposedly received some parting gifts. Round two was pretty much the same as round one, but the scores were reset to zero and they started again. After five more questions, the three players with the highest scores played Trivial Pursuit, the classic game. They also received a prize for making it to that show. The losers, of course, went to the land of parting gifts. After each round ended, it was time for a Trivial Pursuit play break, where the viewers at home could play and win prizes. The viewers called a 1-900 number shown on the screen, and for $4.98 could compete with viewers across the country. Well, as many viewers as there were that watched a cable game show back then. Anyway, they were all given a certain amount of time to call in, indicated by a timer on the screen. When the call-in time ended, after a commercial break, the play break began. Gameplay for the play breaks was pretty much the same as it was on TV, and players would use their touch-tone phones to enter their answers. The winner of each play break won a prize and competed on Friday in a playoff game against the other winners for a vacation. They also had what was called a playoff payoff on New Year's Day 1994, which took place during an 11-hour marathon of Trivial Pursuit, hosted by the Winker himself. All the playoff winners up to that point competed in a tournament for the grand prize, a brand new Ford Explorer, which was won by Elisa Standow of Los Angeles. The second half of the hour was Trivial Pursuit, the classic game, which was more of a traditional game show. The three winners from the first half competed for a chance to win cash and a trip. As in the board game, the object is for each player to fill in all the colored wedges on a large pie-shaped token on the front of their podiums. Each wedge is a different color and represents a different category, with the contestants needing two correct answers to fill a wedge. On the show, red replaced the brown-colored wedge from the board game, which is now purple. In the first three rounds, each player received two turns, consisting of a category choice, followed by a question asked by Wink. The player at the leftmost podium went first in round one, and they moved down the line after each question. A correct answer led up a half wedge, but an incorrect answer gave the two opponents a chance to ring in and steal the half wedge with a correct answer. Play then moved on to the next contestant in line, regardless of whether or not the half wedge was claimed and the category that was selected was now out of play. In round one, the six classic genus categories were used. Wink, what are they? And the categories will be geography, entertainment, history, art and literature, science and nature, and sports and leisure. After all six categories were exhausted, they moved on to round two. Originally, round two was played in two halves, but in later episodes, it was treated as a separate third round. In the first part, the categories were either about the movies or about television. The movie categories are... Settings, titles, off-screen, on-screen, production, and portrayals. And the TV categories are... Classics, sitcoms, drama, kids and games, stars, and wildcard. The player at the middle podium went first. After the categories were cleared, the second half of the round, or round three and later episodes, began, and the categories would come from several different versions of Trivial Pursuit. I'm not going to go through all of them because that would take too long. But in early episodes, I'll mention that the questions would relate to a certain year or decade in history. And the player at the rightmost podium began this round. Round two, or rounds two and three, included three special questions called bonus questions, hidden behind three of the categories, usually one in one half of the round and two in the other. When chosen, the player who answered an audio or video question correctly had the opportunity to answer a follow-up question, which awarded $100 cash, there's the keep win or lose, and another half wedge in the color of their choice with a correct answer. Like a regular question, the first part of the bonus question was open to the other two players if the player who chose it missed. But if no one got the first part of the bonus question, the follow-up was not asked. The final round again used the traditional genus categories as in round one, but this round would be played in a different manner. The round started with Wink asking a toss-up question, and the first player to ring in and answer correctly was given control of the game, keeping control as long as they kept answering questions correctly and earning half wedges. But if the player in control missed a question, the question turned into a toss-up for the other two players, and the one who answered it correctly received control and that half wedge, if it had not already been filled on their pie. If nobody answered correctly, another toss-up was played to determine control. The round continued in this matter 
until either a player completely filled in their pie and won the game, or time was called, whatever happened first. A warning tone would signal that there was one minute left in the final round if it occurred. If time was called, the player who had filled in the most wedges in their pie was then declared the winner. The winner picked up an additional $500 in cash and won another prize and advanced to the Trivial Pursuit Challenge round. The runners-up each got an additional parting gift and any cash won from bonus questions. In the Trivial Pursuit Challenge round, the day's winner needed to correctly answer one question in each of the six genus categories within 45 seconds. Each category was played one question at a time in sequence, starting with geography and ending with sports and leisure. Answering a question in a category correctly caused its respective wedge to light up in their pie. Answering incorrectly or passing left the wedge blank until a question was answered correctly. After Wink asked a question in all six categories, he'd go back and start the sequence again. Although in early episodes, he'd say that they would ask new questions in any categories missed. Each wedge lit up awarded the contestant an additional $100. If the champion of the day managed to fill up the pie within the time limit, they won an additional $1,000 and a vacation. If there was extra time at the end of the show, an audience member was called up on stage and given the opportunity to answer multiple choice questions, kind of like on the interactive game. The questions were worth $20 a piece, and the game ended when time was called, usually after five or six questions. Now we'll talk about the gameplay for the failed pilot. As you can see, the set was updated and made to look much snazzier. Supposedly, there would have been returning champions on this version as well. The contestants also played for money in addition to lighting up wedges in their pies. The six genus categories were used throughout the whole show. In round one, the questions were worth $200 apiece, while wrong answers took that amount away. The game started with a toss-up question in a specific category, after which the contestant in control then got to keep picking categories and answering questions and earning money until they missed, at which point the other two players could buzz in and steal the wedge and the money. If no one answered correctly, Wink would ask another toss-up open to all the players. Once a contestant let up all six wedges in their ply, that player and only that player got to try for a bonus question. Wink would give them the category beforehand, and the contestant would wager any or all of their money they had up to that point. A right answer added the amount of their wager, while a wrong answer subtracted it, similar to a daily double on Jeopardy. In any case, after the bonus question was asked, the player's pie would be reset, and another toss-up would be asked. The round ended when a Time's Up buzzer sounded. Three rounds were played. In round two, the question values increased to $300. And in round three, the values increased again to $500 apiece. But now all questions were toss-ups, save for bonus questions. At the end of the third round, the player with the most money got to keep it all and became champion. That player then went on to the bonus round, now called the Ultimate Trivia Challenge. But it was played the same as before. The winner still had to get six wedges lit up in 45 seconds. It was never said if a contestant won any money for each correct answer if they fell short, but for getting all six awarded the champion a trip, in this case a 14-day European cruise worth over $10,000. And that is how the 1990s version of Trivial Pursuit was played. Now we will pursue the grade. I remember this show fondly, and I remember seeing it when I was a kid during the summer of 93, the year I turned 10. Shudder at the thought. Anyway, after I went back to school in the fall, I had my mom tape it for me, and I would watch it when I got home. Although I probably didn't know it was in reruns at the time. Anyway, to be honest, I'm amazed the Family Channel didn't keep the show going for more seasons. It did get good ratings, after all. Well, good enough for a cable channel in the early 90s run by a crazy televangelist who thought the world was going to end. Anyway, Trivial Pursuit is one of the most successful board games of all time, and it did make sense to turn it into a game show. While the classic game is decent, it does have some flaws, mainly because one contestant could run away with the game, especially in the final round, because they could get control of the categories on a toss-up question, and as long as they didn't get anything wrong, they just win the game and the other players might not even get a chance. Also, the payoff was not very satisfying, even for a 90s cable game show. Other cable game shows of the era, such as Supermarket Sweep, Shop Till You Drop, and even Family Double Dare gave away at least $5,000 in cash and or prizes. It was also possible for the winner to walk away with less than $1,000 if they didn't do well in the challenge round. I personally think the winner should have gotten $1,000 for winning the front game, and the challenge round should have been played for $5,000 cash. I actually think the unsold pilot was an improvement as the contestant could win over $15,000 in cash and prizes in one show. Also, the gameplay in the pilot seemed more competitive and faster paced than what actually aired on TV. 
It's a shame that this version didn't get picked up. However, it was still better than the interactive game as it was a more traditional game show. The interactive game may have been innovative at the time, but it just seemed kind of mediocre in retrospect at best. In fact, it simply served to get people to try out for the play breaks, which was the whole gist of the game. Now, this is the part where I normally talk about how I would revive the show if I had the chance, but we all know it's coming back on the CW sometime this year, and it's going to be hosted by LeVar Burton. It's not known how it will be played, but here's how I hope it will be done. In fact, you'll be able to see how it might work in an anime-style game show video coming soon, where I do all the voices of the characters. But I will best describe it to you here if you're not patient, or you don't want to see or hear me do bad voice acting, so I can spare you my uh, embarrassment. Basically, the format would be the same as the pilot that Wink tried to sell the syndication in 1993, but with a couple of changes. There would be three new players each episode with no returning champions. And instead of three rounds, they'd play four. The first round would use questions from the six genus categories and would still be worth $200 a piece. Incorrect answers took that amount away. Filling up a pie would still have that player get to double their money with a bonus question, and the contestant would also receive a prize for filling up their pie. There's to keep, win, or lose. And the prizes would change each round, and it'd be available with all for all contestants to win. In round two, the questions would increase to $300 a piece, but the categories would change to questions from either the movies or TV versions. In round three, the questions will again increase to $400 a piece, and categories would change again and would be themed to a certain decade or a historic era. The fourth and final round would go back to the genus categories. All questions would be worth $500 each, and all would be toss-ups, save for bonus questions. The player with the most cash at the end won the game and kept all their money. The runners-up would each get a $1,000 consolation prize, you know, to cover their expenses while they're in L.A., but they would otherwise get to keep whatever prizes they want along the way. The Trivial Pursuit Challenge round was the same as before. The winners still had to get six wedges lit up in 45 seconds. And for every wedge lit, they still earned $1,000. But getting all six won an additional $25,000 in cash. Anyway, that's my most recent episode of 15-Minute Game Show Reviews. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit that like button down below. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and on Space Hey. And I've got more videos coming soon. I'm Marty Itchram, the Geeky American Otaku, and I will let LeVar close me out. I'll see you next time.